This is Land of Havilah, Proverbs 8, verse 1. Doesn't wisdom cry out? Doesn't understanding raise her voice? On the top of high places by the way, where the paths meet, she stands. Beside the gates, at the entry of the city, at the entry doors, she cries aloud. Comment Solomon says, Wisdom and understanding cry out from hilltops beside the roads, at intersections, at the city gates, at the city limits, and at every front door. In short, she's calling out everywhere. She's always in our ear. If we can't hear her, it's because we've tuned her out. To put it another way, God's constantly speaking good sense to everyone. Are we paying attention? In the rest of the chapter, which runs from verses 4 to 36, she speaks directly to us, describes herself, and gives her credentials. We'll read it uninterrupted. It's easy to understand. Wisdom says, verse 4, To you, men, I call. I send my voice to the sons of mankind. You simple, understand prudence. You fools, be of an understanding heart. Hear, for I'll speak excellent things. The opening of my lips is for right things. For my mouth speaks truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There's nothing crooked or perverse in them. They're all plain to him who understands, right to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction rather than silver, knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies. All the things that may be desired can't be compared to it. I, wisdom, have made prudence my dwelling. Find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil. I hate pride, arrogance, the evil way, and the perverse mouth. Counsel and sound knowledge are mine. I have understanding and power. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule, nobles and all the righteous rulers of the earth. I love those who love me. Those who seek me diligently will find me. With me are riches, honor, enduring wealth, and prosperity. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold. My yield than choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness in the middle of the paths of justice that I may give wealth to those who love me. I fill their treasuries. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his work before his deeds of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, before the earth existed. When there were no depths, I was born, when there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was born. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the beginning of the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he set a circle on the surface of the deep, when he established the clouds above, when the springs of the deep became strong, when he gave to the sea its boundary that the waters should not violate his commandment, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was the craftsman by his side. I was a delight day by day, always rejoicing before him, rejoicing in his whole world. My delight was with the sons of men, now therefore, my sons, listen to me, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise. Don't refuse it. Blessed is the man who hears me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at my doorposts. For whoever finds me finds life and will obtain favor from Yahweh. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. Comment in verse 4, the first helpful key is to know that wisdom is available. She sends her voice to the sons of mankind. In verse 5, she can turn a simple fool into a prudent and understanding person. In verses 6 and 7, she speaks of what's excellent, right, true, and good. Wickedness is an abomination to her. She hates wickedness with a deep hatred. In verse 8, wisdom is just, righteous, straight, and true. In verse 9, wisdom is very plain to a person of understanding who has some sense. There's nothing mysterious about it. In verses 10 and 11, she's better than silver, gold, rubies, or anything we might think of. There's no material thing that approaches her in value, nothing to compare to her. In verse 12, she lives in the same house or cohabits with prudence, knowledge, and discretion. They come in a package deal. They don't conflict with each other. Find one and you find the rest. In verse 13, if we fear God, we hate evil. Quote, the fear of Yahweh is to hate evil. End quote. 
Also in verse 13, another hallmark of wisdom is that she's thoroughly good. She's also humble in verse 13. She hates pride and arrogance. She's identical with the wisdom of God. Now, someone might think this is all weak, namby-pamby, ineffective, goody-two-shoes type stuff, that if someone is wise as described here, they'll make no impact on the world and get run over. But in verse 14, from there on, it's the complete opposite. In wisdom, there's counsel, sound knowledge, by her kings reign, princes decree justice, princes rule, nobles, and all the righteous rulers of the earth. So there's nothing weak and ineffective about wisdom. In verse 17, though wisdom calls out, sometimes we can't hear and must seek her. Those who seek her will find her. In verses 18 and 19, with wisdom, there are, quote, riches, honor, enduring wealth, and prosperity better than gold, end quote. Wisdom's too often ignored and undervalued. In verse 20, wisdom goes hand in hand with righteousness and justice. She fills our personal treasuries with all good things in verse 21. Now more about her credentials in a long section from verses 22 to 31. Yahweh possessed wisdom from the beginning and created the world with wisdom. Therefore, therefore we can know that even though things went horribly wrong when Adam and Eve rebelled, God didn't regret giving them free will or have any other regrets in creation. Giving, giving them free will was wise. It took wisdom to accomplish creation, therefore we should be in awe of wisdom. Though she's accessible and understandable in this life, we'll never fully appreciate her. She's too vast to fully comprehend. In verse 27, when God established the earth, he set a circle on the face of the deep. The deep means the ocean. And according to the NET translation, the circle means the horizon. For example, if we were standing on a tiny island in the middle of the Mediterranean, we could turn a full circle and see that the horizon meets the water all around that 360 degrees. He sets a circle on the face of the deep. In verses 30 and 31, wisdom rejoiced at the creation, which is like the Genesis statement in Genesis 1.31 that God saw that the creation was very good. It wasn't a botched job. Wisdom rejoiced at creation. In verse 31, of all the creation, wisdom's delight was with the sons of men. Man wasn't a mistake. He was a prime example of God's wisdom. After all's been said in verses 32 to the end, don't ignore wisdom and don't take her lightly. Rather, be in awe of her. He who sins against her sins against his own soul in the last verse. Let's not float along in the simplicity of a little, a little evil here, a little cutting of the corners there, and life will be smoother. No, wisdom is in complete truth, righteousness, and humility, hating evil, and fearing God. In verse 35, that's how we find life and God's favor. As a side note, putting verses 13 and 18 together is paradoxical, but humility leads to honor. It's not boasting that leads to honor. Paradoxically, humility leads to honor. Proverbs 9 is next.